Good morning. And good evening in South Africa. My name is Jan Verlun. This is all the way from Welcome Bay here in Tauranga. A hearty good morning to the New Zealanders and to the South Africans. Good evening. And the people in the middle, I don't know where you guys are, but good morning, good evening. Guys, this morning we are, uh, we are very fortunate. We have Rudy Carstens. Um, he's coming live with us. And he's going to tell us a bit about his time in Wellington. I've seen there was a lot in that. So this morning um, we are going to just wait for Rudy to join us this side. And then we are going to, to, to ask him a few questions. Good morning, Rudy. How are you? Good morning. Very good. Thanks for I'm you. I'm glad you can hear me that side. Um, yeah. This morning, it's all about uh, all about you and, and Wellington. Um, I just want to ask you a few questions. That's fine. You you lived in Wellington, I think, for what, something like two years. Am I right? Yeah, just under two years. And what's your thoughts on the weather there? So, weather-wise, um, yeah, coming from, from Durban in South Africa, moving to Wellington was uh, was quite a shock. But um, the first year that we got there, we moved in uh, into the Porirua area, which is about 25 k's up the coast from Wellington. Uh, we moved in in October 2015. And... I must say that, I mean, when we got there, it was still pretty cold. Um, we didn't have much. We were just a, a blow-up mattress and some blankets. But uh, the, 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 summer, the summer was awesome, actually. We had a really, really nice summer that year. And uh, we were like, what is everyone talking about? The weather is nice. It doesn't rain all the time. Um, and then winter came the next year. And winter pretty much... For that year it didn't stop i think we had a couple of nice days the next summer during february and it was pretty much it felt like winter right through the year up until the next winter um and then the the june so, of, so you basically had no summer am i right just just a couple of days less than 10 days of 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 hot weather and the rest of the time was rainy, it was misty, and it was it was cold enough to still wear a jacket during summer. And therefore, for a Devon boykie like you, there was no uh, sun sun and beach and, and surfboards, none? No, no not, no, not at all, not at all. So, um, you got Welling, Welling, Wellingtonians will tell you that if it's a nice day in Wellington, um then it's the best day in new zealand some something like that but um but yeah just take take that with a, a pinch of salt for people that's been living in wellington or grew, grew up there so but i guess i think if you come from cape town we will probably um be be used to it a bit more and it wouldn't, we wouldn't be as bad a change uh but coming from durban it's it's definitely something to get used to all right. Uh, oh, the Wellington has got this name as, as Windy Wellington. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? So, yeah, pr pretty much. Um, I mean, you'd quite often have wind warnings from 80 to 120 kilometers um, almost every second to third week. Uh, most of the time, it's quite windy. And like I said, pretty much couple of days a year you'd have uh, some really nice days where it's not windy sun is out and it's just like perfect beach weather but uh, but the rest of the time it's it's really really windy our house um where we stayed in at papa kofi uh pretty much when when it was the nights when it was windy our garage made a sound and it sounded like someone is is uh is pretty much breaking into the house almost it was it was it was quite an experience but you got used to it and um i must say when we moved to to taronga actually some nights actually miss miss that to hear the wind outside and just kind of howling around the corners but um yeah i i know you as a as an outdoor type of person who loves 
going for long walks or as the New Zealanders call it, tramping um, with the dogs and the wife into the countryside. Could you really do that with that type of weather in Wellington? Yeah, you get used to it. I, um, or, or I guess you, you're kind of forced to get just used to it. So you get some good gear, uh, a nice rain raincoat, and um, you just have to go out and do it and, and, and toughen up a bit. Otherwise, you're just going to sit inside the house all the time. So we, we went out loads of times with the dogs, go tramping. There's a lot of nice places to go and walk there. Um, a lot of nice um, uh, short walks where you can go with the dogs, a couple of longer walks, um, really nice couple of waterfall tracks. So it definitely pays to, excuse me, it definitely pays to go out and, um, and just do it. Um, you can't always look up at the sky and say, oh, I wonder if it's going to start to rain or not. And Otherwise, you're just always going to sit inside the house and that's just going to get to... So after a while, you just, I would say, you, you kind of get a bit over it and you just go out and do it. People in New Zealand, as you'll see, they're quite crazy and um, they'll, they'll be walking in the rain just as if it's nothing. Or, so. Yeah, I saw that. That's quite amazing the way that People, if it's raining or snowing or sun is shining, they just go on with their lives as normal. Other thing I wanted to ask you regarding um, Wellington is, what about the public transport there? I, I know you use public transport a bit, and I think that's been a concern for quite a few people on public transport. Can you deliver, can you tell us a bit more about that? So in the time that I worked there, I worked in, in, in Wellington in the city itself, um, and I traveled every day with train. So going in every, every day, I made use of the, the monthly train ticket, which saves you quite a bit of money. So the, <clears throat> you have about four, four railway lines coming in and out of Wellington from, from the main station in the city. And one, one goes to Johnsonville, one goes up the coast the, called the Kapiti Line, which goes past Tawa, Porirua, uh, Parabara Ubo up into all the way up to Waikanae and then the other one goes through through to Lower Hut and Upper Hut and um, and then from there on it actually goes further all the way up to Masterton so right. so it works in zone so you, you, you pay according to the zone um, mm. and the best place to go and have a look is on metlink.org.nz <clears throat> and on, on there you'll see notifications, information about if there's problems with the trains or the buses. Uh, sometimes if they have a train breakdown, they'll have buses replace trains. <clears throat> so you can jump on a bus for free that day to, to get where you need to go if there's a problem with the train. Um, and also got information about all the timetables and the different zones and the fees. So for a monthly ticket, you can uh, pretty much aim anything between $126 a month up into $444 a month, which will be the furthest point, which is Masterton, which is probably about, if you're going to drive my car, about two and a half hours, two hours drive from Wellington. Oh, so these, these train, train tracks actually go up very far. And I mean, yeah. if you just take your, 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 your petrol versus the, the, the distance traveled, I mean, then you probably are better off buying the train ticket. Just something else. No. I, I know in, in, the, in the mind of every South African watching this tonight is how often is these trains delayed? I mean, I come from Cape Town and normally every day all the trains are basically delayed. So what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> no, in the... Yeah, and 10 months that are that are trained into work and back home, I'll say that maybe 5% of the time we had delays. And if if it's delayed, it will be maybe a minute, two minutes. Um, uh, and that's about it. If, if, the, if the train is delayed any more than that, then you'll be notified and say, hey, the train is running five or 10 minutes late. Um, and then usually, usually what happens is the, the, the next train following up the one that's late will pretty much stop almost 30 seconds after that one so that they, 
re-rectify the timetable that, that they're running on. Mm. So, and only other times is pretty much um, like when we had the earthquake there, uh, the trains were off for three days. They were investigating the tracks, making sure everything is fine. So those days you couldn't um, do, use the train to get into work. But a lot of people in those days, in any case, they just work from home or do not work because the city is under, um, I want to say in crisis mode, as all the, all the inspectors will be doing building inspect, inspections and so on. Okay. Um, just something else. Um, if I want to go and stay in Wellington, or what, what is very good areas for me to stay in? Um, let's talk budget-wise. I'm not talking top, top end of the budget. I'm talking the average person living there. So, the first thing is, in winter time, finding rentals will be more difficult than in summertime. Why? The first, when, when, uh, apparently, people in Wellington just do not want to move during winter. Okay. So have, you'll, she'll have a more difficult time finding a place in winter. And saying that, it's already finding a place to rent is quite scarce and hard in Wellington. Um, and I think it's even more so now than, than when we went. When we went to view our couple of places, uh, you pitch up and there's 30 other people looking at the same rental. So so there's, the landlords pretty much have to pick, pick who they want. Um, and most of the time, uh, they will rather pick a professional couple or maybe people with not too many kids. Um, so it all, it, it all just depends. But South Africans have a really good rap and reputation for, for being good renters. So, so that definitely goes a long way for us um, and really bumps up your chances when you, when you apply to, to rent a place. Um, most than likely, you'll probably beat the competition. So I would say keep up the good reputation when you're renting. <laughs> Uh, a, a difficult question from, from my side. Um, I know you have got dogs. You had these dogs in Wellington as well? Yes. Finding a house? How difficult was that? We uh, had a couple of places that we, that we had a look at. Um, and two, two of the places that, that was a maybe for us was quite a, quite a cold and dark house that we were that kind of was our option B. And then we found another place that um, didn't really have uh, pets negotiable, but we made sure to, from, from our rentals in South Africa, we asked for extra referrals for our dogs to say that there was no property damage done due to our dogs and, and so on. So we used those to to fill in the forms and um, we provided extra comments when, when applying to say that our dogs are very well behaved, they don't soil in the house, they don't break down the curtains or rip up the carpets and so on. Um, so that with the, with the reference from South Africa, I think was, was a pretty good thing. And, and some landlords in New Zealand have um, a view that People with dogs actually do less damage than people with kids, uh, but it's it's not across the board. Um, so, but but it can be difficult. I mean, it, it really depends on what's on the market at the time. Sometimes you you're lucky. Sometimes there's lots available. Uh, other times there's really not much. But I would definitely say, all if you have dogs and you're applying for a place, even if it if it says no dogs, just ask the question. There's no harm in asking. Um, like I said, the place didn't show that there was no pets. We asked and we were approved. So, so there's no harm in asking. Always ask the question. The other, the other thing that, that the South Africans don't know about you is the fact that those two dogs are, aren't massive dogs. Uh, the one is the Dachshund, or is that the Vorshund? And the other yeah. little thing, um, it's about the size so it's, it's not big dogs. It's not Alsatians and that type of dog. So I probably would be looked different at, at the, the, the size of the dog as well. I, I would believe if I was a landlord and somebody comes with a small little dog 
uh, versus a guy with a massive dog. I mean, the, the difference in those two animals is just is, is immense. On the other side, um, I, I've been to Wellington for two days, and um, I think we had about an hour and a half of good weather there. Uh, and during this hour and a half, we, we used that time wisely just to quickly check out the city. But Wellington yep. is, is the capital of New Zealand, and it's it's quite a it's the second largest city. I know Auckland is massive, but Wellington's the second largest city. There's about four hundred thousand people living there. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean it's it's actually a really nice city, and um, apart from the weather, it's actually really nice to to stay there in the area. I mean, if you if you if you get used to the weather and it doesn't bother you that much, then um, then you'll really settle in nicely, to be honest. Um, I mean, the just that the transport is really easy to get around. Uh, people are really nice and friendly down there. Uh, the city itself is, is quite nice. I mean, I, I used to train in and then I pretty much walked, depending on where I contracted at, uh, between one and 10 blocks in the morning and in the evening when I go back home. And uh, there's lots of people walking in, in, in Wellington, probably more so than, than what you will see in, in Auckland and in, in Taronga from, from my experience. Um, there's loads of nice little small places where you can go eat and have coffee at. Um, it's a really, um, it's a really kind of, I always want to say, a, a chatty community, if you want to call it that. People, you so open Cairo. So... <laughs> how many how many South Africans is there in Wellington? If, if if you know that question or the answer to that, uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, I mean, every now and then, pretty much like in Taronga, you you just hear someone speak Afrikaans, or you can hear from the accent and from English accent that you know there's another South African. Um, at almost all the places I worked at, I met South Africans. So, so there's, I'll say there's definitely quite a good community there. There's, there's a lot of work there as well, work opportunities. Mm. So, so I'll say for someone coming in, if you do get a, if you get a job opportunity or an offer in New Zealand, uh, in Wellington, just don't, don't turn it down. Go for it. Get your foot in the door. You can always move later. Um, I mean, it's, it's. You'll you'll still you'll still live and you'll still enjoy it and there's still loads to do. Um, yeah, just get a good raincoat and that's it. <laughs> I, I see one of the questions that came up now was: um, Is the ocean water nice to swim in, or is it too cold? This comes <laughs> from Carla the Tlerk. <laughs> so I would say um, February is pretty much the best month to to go swimming. Um, I guess when it comes down to kids, they, you know, they don't feel the cold. So if you've got kids, they just chuck them in the ocean. They won't care. But um, if you're a bit older, then, uh, then I would definitely suggest uh, getting some, some, uh, a wetsuit. Uh, so, so yeah, otherwise January, February is probably the best months that you would probably go swim, swim at um, normally. The rest of the year, I don't know. It depends on your, um, you can handle the cold water. All right, so, so basically, um, what I hear from you is that uh, the Wellington water versus the Blauberg water in South Africa is very much the same. Yeah, but um, I, I won't say it's quite that that cold like like okay. uh, in Cape Town, but, uh, but almost it's close. Yeah, because I mean the water in Cape Town is absolutely freezing. Uh, I lived there for yeah. many years, and I, I can't think I can count on the one hand the amount of times I even try to go into the ocean. So, um, a small concern here from Renir. Uh, he asked about the safety in Wellington. Um, all over in, in, in New Zealand, I nearly said South Africa, but in New Zealand, it's, it's very safe. Uh, Wellington being the second biggest, what was your thoughts on that, safety-wise? Um, yeah, pretty much a couple of things. Uh, that I can that I can point out is the the police. So in in Papakofa, right at the bottom area, close to the highway, they've got the police colleges there. So in the Porirua, Aotea, um, and Papakofa area, which is a bit up the coast, uh, there's quite a 
that's probably the the highest police presence that you'll see just because the police college is there and they do lots of training around the area but in general in the wellington region there's a lot more police presence um i would say partly because it's the capital and all the government things are happening there mm. uh, there's a lot more presence for police there than in taronga from what i've seen um and a lot of uh so the guys drive around in unmarked cars so make sure that when you do live there, don't speed um, if you don't see a police car because someone in an unmarked car will, will see you. But uh, I guess come, coming to the safety, first couple of months that we lived there, um, I mean, I was blocking my garage, which was um, outside the house. I didn't have in-house access to the garage um, and all the doors and things. And after about four months, I stopped blocking my garage. and probably about between five and 10 times, I actually forgot to close the garage door at, at night and, and you know, come there the next morning, oh crap, the garage door is open, but everything is still there, you know, it's nothing's even been touched or moved. Um, and uh, one day I was driving the train and I forgot my jacket on the train while I was uh, going out to town and I went back lunchtime to the train station and uh, someone handed in my jacket and the lady said um, that people are generally good that way. And she said the previous week, someone left an envelope with $5,000 in the train and someone handed it in. So it's just to give you an idea of, of how honest people are there. Um, I've heard many stories of people losing wallets, cell phones, and people getting it and actually just paying for the courier themselves to send it to the person that lost it. So, and, and around safety was, I mean, there's a couple of things, kids being naughty and whatnot, but uh, I mean, that, nothing serious, really. But yeah, in I, general... Sorry, I, I see the consensus in New Zealand is rather to do good than to do bad. Um, uh, also, also handing stuff in, this is the norm. I mean, people lose their cell phones in, in Taranga. It's, it's phenomenally how many cell phones gets lost here and how many f of those cell phones just get back within a day. It just, yeah. it, it baffles my mind. I'm here for more than a year now and it, it still takes it over the top. I mean, a cell phone lost in South Africa is gone. I'm not even talking about the cell phone stolen. A cell phone lost in South Africa is just gone. So yeah, it's cool. um, I want to wrap up. Uh, I know you've got to go to work this morning and it's starting to, the, 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 starting to get a little bit of light outside, I see. Um, any reason why I will not go and live in Wellington, from your view? <laughs> if you come from Durban, it's the weather. <laughs> that, uh, um, it's it's difficult to to put my finger on one on something specific. Um, but I mean, if the if the weather is going to bother you, it's going to bother you really. Um, but but otherwise, except for that, it's, um, it's, it's, it's actually quite nice to live in the area, to be honest. Um, yeah, just when, when you look for a place to live, uh, a house, try and, try and make sure that you get sun, if there's sun, that you get sun most, mostly throughout the day, um, as you don't live behind a hill or something, because then the house will get really, really cold. <clears throat> um, oh, that's so, good advice. So, so that's 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 what I would say. Yeah, and make make sure that you have the houses properly insulated and and so on. If your company um, has the option tomorrow to move you back to Wellington or to move you back to South Africa, which one will you take? Wellington. Okay, no hesitation there. Rudy, thanks a lot uh, for your time this morning. Um, I really appreciate that. I know you've got to go to work this morning early. So um, thanks again. Uh, I quickly want to tell people a bit more about uh, the, the difference in, in the two islands. I've, I've done something weird here. I hope we can get this on there. All right. Guys, this is New Zealand. Two islands, north and south. All right. North Island, it's 1,060 kilometers from that side to the bottom. This is the size of, of, the, of the island. The South yeah, Island... Just move, just move the camera a bit down. Yeah, that's better. Ah, is that better? Okay. The South Island, 
from that point to that point is 1,100 kilometers. All right, you got that. Um, I still get people who ask me about New Zealand and uh, it looks as if they don't understand that we are really two different islands. The, 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 the difference between the two islands is about 104 kilometers and that's gonna be by either by plane or by ferry. If you do the ferry thing, it's about four, uh, four hours on the ferry. Um, I will take a bit of time a bit later and post a few YouTube videos regarding um, the ferry rides that has been there as well as a bit of the weather videos that is on that is on YouTube available. So guys, there's about four minutes left. Uh, let's take one or two quick questions next week and it'll give us a bit more time. Um, but the weather is much nicer in Tauranga than in Wellington. That's why Rudy is living here and not there anymore. All right, safety, safety in New Zealand. Back to the old question, how safe is New Zealand? New Zealand's very, very safe, really. Uh, one of those things, if you leave your stuff somewhere or you forgot your stuff somewhere, you have about a 99% chance of finding it back, either handed in by the police station or handed in at the lost and found um, at the, the, the local supermarket or wherever you lost it. So let's keep that in mind. If you, lo if you lost something, go and look for it. You probably will find it. All right, so let's take one or two questions. Um, there's a lot of South African churches in Wellington. That comes from Elaine. Um, I, I do not see that you guys have any questions about uh, Wellington. So that must have been a, a very good session from, from Rudy's side. Um, so yeah, Rudy is a guy who moved here from Durban. Uh, left the, the heat of Durban for uh, Wellington's called and Windy. Brought his uh, dog and bought another New Zealand dog. Um, strangely enough, the, the New Zealand dogs, they, they also bark very much the same as the African dogs, but just much less. Uh, that was also my, always my biggest fear, is if coming to a different country and um, then the dogs don't understand if I say foot sack. I mean, come on, how difficult must that be? All right, guys, I think we're going we're gonna to take a wrap this morning. Um, shop in Wellington, I'm getting ask here. Uh, shops in, in, in Wellington is very much the same shops that you have all over New Zealand. You've got Pack and Save, Countdown, all these big things. Um, I don't know about massive malls. I haven't seen massive malls while I was there, but I only was there for two days. So I can't really, really um, comment on that part. Uh, but most of the bigger malls you, you get all over Wellington, or, or all over New Zealand, you will get in Wellington. Wellington has got a lot of people living there, about 400,000. Um, I see Yolanda from Amara says she's getting nervous about the Wellington idea. Yolanda, if you're on Wellington, you're even better off than you are anywhere in South Africa, to be quite frank with you. Um, all right, then Sean DeLonga wants to have a guest speaker that can assist us with schooling. Guys, if there are any New Zealanders who's got young kids, we had Karen already from Auckland regarding a bit of schooling and the way that her kids adopted or adapted, not adopted, adapted in school here. Yeah? If, if there's any New Zealanders or to be New Zealanders but living here already and you can give us some information on schooling, please get hold of me that I bring you live on here. And there's a lot of people that want some information on that. Um, my kid is 22 years old, so but too old to tell you about school um, as he has went to school in South Africa. Guys, at this, my time, I think my time is up. My name is Jan. I'm a financial advisor here in Taranga. I work both islands, north and south. And as you can see, it's really two islands. Um, all the way from Welcome Bay this morning, I want to say thank you. I'm going to love you and leave you. Stay safe in South Africa and New Zealand. Guys, get up and go to work. See you next Wednesday evening, 8 o'clock, South African time.